Good morning. Happy Wednesday to everybody. Look who I found. Just <laughs> found him just wandering around and said, man, you want to do a morning show, man? Because it's been a, a day or two. Uh, but actually, it's the first time you've been on this week, isn't it, Alex? Yeah, man. I had some, had some stuff going on. <laughs> had some stuff going on this week with the old fam and around around the house. Hopefully, I'll be good for the rest of the week. Still trying to figure out tomorrow and stuff. But yeah, man. Good to be back on. Good to see everybody in the chat. And uh yeah, big, 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 big show coming up. Yeah. Uh, first of all, good morning to everybody there in the chat. Money B is always in the house. We love you, Money B. Green Lantern, Alan, Mark, Jesse. Uh, good morning to all you guys who are out there. We know all the buys who will be there soon. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Uh, we're, we're over here. Uh, we're over at 18,000 uh, su subs trying to get ourselves to 20,000 by uh, the, the time summertime rolls around. So make sure uh, you do all of that. And as Alex said, we got some playing football to talk. Spring football is, is is in full swing. Longhorns had practice yesterday. Uh, kind of a late, you know, they're, they're going to have a day off today. Uh, tomorrow will be Thursday. Sarkeesian said yesterday that they'll have a, a lighter practice on I'm Thursday. not sure we have too much to report from tomorrow on war. These yeah, light yeah. these light Thursdays before the Saturday scrimmage. Um Is that more like a walkthrough it's kind be a walk of thing. Through. Yes, yes, yes. Say, that's walkthrough, right? Yeah, well, I mean, look, they're not going to use the um they're they're not they only get 15 practices, right? So they're, they're not going to use a they're not going to waste a practice. They're going to do stuff with with you know, getting out there, getting mental reps, doing this stuff like this, drilling and install, all the rest of that, right? But it wouldn't be any – I'll tell you this. I wouldn't be surprised if Bianco calls us up or emails us and says we can come to practice tomorrow and he didn't get his practice Tuesday because it's not – it's not going to – it's not going to be a practice where we can learn anything. You know what I mean? It's just – it's just – it's, it's going to be a practice where the players will – you know, especially during the periods that they're going to give us. They're going to mm. give us individual dr drills during the periods where they're not even working on any of the install stuff. They're just going, you know how it is on war. Like during yeah. individual drills, you go over body movements. Um, you go over, you know, it's just, it's, it's repetition of the different, of the different, uh, m you know, m movements that, that they need to do to be able to execute certain plays. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, whenever it's, whenever it's more of like a walkthrough day, it's certain, I mean, I don't know if it'll be helmets and shells or whether it'll be just helmets uh -huh. in a set in a spot like that. You can't even get any good tidbits away from like how these guys even look moving athletically. It's like it's like there's not much you can you know. So yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll just be like, hey guys, you can have access tomorrow. Aren't you happy? And it's like gosh, even when it's you know, even when it's cool, you know. It's, we'll it's, take it. We'll take it though, Alice. We'll yeah. take it. We'll 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 take what what little crumbs and morsels uh, that we can get, but. Uh, there is there has been a development uh, a little bit, Alex, and you know, uh, you know, I'll 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 set you up for for this one. You know, Trey Moore. That's the title of everything there. The UTSA guy here in on the edge. We've talked about him before, Alex. What what did, what have your sources been telling you about Trey Moore? What have you been hearing about him? Because I have some things as well. Well, we just like so yesterday we were just trying to do a doing a roundup. You know, catch putting out the call to anybody. You know, if you if you if you hear anything from practice, let him know because we know that yesterday, Tuesday was, um, it's like like Sark said in his PC, and I th I don't know, I'm not sure if you talked about that on here, but he said yesterday in his PC that it was definitely a physical practice Tuesday because they had they had a, had a couple of days off since the last one on was it Saturday, and so mm -hmm. they came back on Tuesday, and they're gonna have another big one on Saturday with a bunch of visitors and stuff like that. Um, is that the one that the Corey and Morris coming in for? Is he coming yes. in? The weekend? Yes. Okay. So like they'll have a bunch of dudes like that out there, and um, they're gonna have a big kind of like scrimmagey kind of practice, right? So you know they get they get the big one in Tuesday, the big one in Saturday. So I was just trying to ask around, and I did have the stuff in the war room last week, just as a preface to this. Like I'll get back around to what I heard yesterday, but yeah. um, the uh, last week I talked to somebody saying that dude Trey Moore, they're getting him involved not only you know more just in their base packages just off the edge right mm -hmm. but they are using him as a sam linebacker too and so that means they'll go to a three-man front with three linebackers behind the defensive line and then five defensive backs and that way they can spin him down off the edge to where it would look 
it would almost look like there's four men down. It's almost it's like you can't really really tell that much of a difference, right? And, unless you know the personnel and know that okay, well, th- well, this is a spot where he could technically you know buzz off or drop into coverage or do any of the rest of that stuff that you typically wouldn't see from the Buck defensive end. But right? not not necessarily just for those who are out there, Alice. Not necessarily hand in your in the dirt kind of guy. Uh, well, he could. But okay. uh, he 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 could. I I've heard he like he'll he'll spin all the way. Whenever they tell me he'll spin all the way down, that means he he spins all the way down to a two or three point stance. But certainly, I mean, you can kind of spin down to just stand in a two point stance. I would mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. But also, you know, if 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 he needs to, like zone fire stuff, where you know some you know they get like the they want to bring like Jody Baron or something like that, and and have you know have um more like do the whole drop for him right and to mm-hmm. the to, so like more of a true like sam sam linebacker type so he was being used like that so fast forward to tuesday um on tuesday i heard i was just like i'm just i, I i'm so curious about colin simmons and trey Moore, right so i'm always asking people about this stuff and what i was what i heard was that look colin simmons is coming along he's gonna be great but trey Moore now is like i mean he's he's a, he's a fixture, you know, he'd like, he, he's out there all the time now. Uh, and I was just like, was that just a, is that just in this kind of like, I heard about this sub package stuff last week. Somebody was talking about and like, no, like he's out, like he's out there a lot, <laughs> just playing edge too. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and so I don't know exactly. And, you know, dude, you know how it is with this on where when you get stuff from sources, half the time it's just texts and stuff. You have to kind of put two and two together on your own. You don't have all the background information. So I hate to tell people that I don't know exactly what that means as far as with Baron Sorrell and Ethan Burke w- with how things are going with them. I would, I would imagine that since we already knew Burke was already kind of moving a little bit from side to side, that that means that Trey Moore's playing a lot more just at that true buck end. Because that was the actual, you know, quote from, you know, from this person. But how that affects the playing time of um, Sorrell and Burke, res- respectively. All I can do about that is um, just use the insight that we've gained through, you know, the reporting before and the practices that we've been to before. And I would just say that, man, that's just something where it's dynamic, and they keep kind of moving those those guys around. And the fact is. The most important thing to remember is that Trey Moore's playing more. He's 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 mm-hmm. he's, he's he's getting more and more involved. No matter what that means for Sorrell, no matter what that means for Burke, that's just the facts as far as Trey Moore, which is exciting because I'm, I mean Texas needed him to come in and look like the Trey Moore that they had hoped that they were getting out of UTSA. And whenever he first came and I first saw him on the first day, I'm not gonna say I was concerned, but I was just a little bit. I was a little were you surprised by the, his his size. He wasn't quite yeah. as big as I thought. And I was like, man, might this be a little bit of a slower, slower baked? We need to do the whole Jason Sukumel tap the brakes with this guy. He's not going to be a 14 sack dude at Texas, probably. This more, but he looks more like a 14 sack guy at UTSA. Like maybe we need to, you know, a, a little bit of that was starting to creep into my mind. I feel like it's encouraging news to hear that this dude's actually, you know, the staff is treating him like a dude that's going to be really, really involved. So give me give me an idea, Alex, and it's it, even if it's a rough idea, right? But you know, d- d- you know, lean on a little bit of your expertise here, right? How would you see so far a, a depth chart? And, and I'll give you the whole or, right? So you can do a you know Baron Sorrell or Trey Moore at the number one spot on one side, this and that. How would you see the edge position kind of shaping up right now? And excuse me, as my uh, lawn people have come uh, to redo the uh, service that wasn't done properly, that I got billed for, and I had to question What's them. Like, these hey, people, dude, you need to hold them accountable. I, like, I mean, I, I had some tree dudes come out the other day, and God bless my guys at Certified Tree Care, man. My guy Dustin, he's a cool dude, the sales dude there, and I've I've had, and I, I would I would recommend them, right? Yeah. But because. Th- like I care a lot about my trees. I have live oaks. I got probably, you know, probably 500 of them and I don't want to get oak wilt. I don't want these trees to get oak wilt, man. So if you come and work, if, if you come and work on my trees and you make a cut to one of the limbs and, and, and you don't paint the paint it with, with pruning spray afterwards, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to have problems. Right. Yeah. And so I go, I go outside and like, dude, these guys, like I just, I pointed out, I'm like, dude, there's like 50 of these cuts, man. Like, like get these things painted. Um, and so they got him painted, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I went back mm-hmm. out and I examined it more. And like, they still didn't. This guy, Dustin, this poor guy, he's a sales guy. $100, yeah. an, hour, $100 an hour, you know, um, 
W two sales dude, right? He's mm-hmm. having to come out with this big thing with the you know where they can spray high up in the trees and do this. Man. <laughs> this is I felt I felt so bad for him. He just he didn't he didn't he he, he wanted to make sure and take care of me as a customer because I can yeah. Do business. And they do but, good. And, and my people, they at Southern Lawn Care do a fantastic job. But you know sometimes they, they you know they give you some random some random guy comes along it's like a bad wait, crew. Wait. Yeah, it's a bad yeah, crew. And, it just, yeah. and you're just like hey, and I was like cool, but then I got charged. I was like hey, but the Guy called me yesterday. He was like, "Man, he's like, I will come out tomorrow." I, I read data, and it's great. And that, but just so you know, if you hear some things, I might have to mute myself, like catch his dogs. Uh, they're coming and just taking care of what wasn't taken care of before. Yeah. All right. Well, so give regardless. me an idea from a, from a, a depth chart perspective. Again, all right. So I the defensive the line, I would make more. it. Um, I would say, uh, I'd say, okay, jack end. So like kind of strong side defensive end type. Because I'm putting Burke on both sides, okay? So, because he's moving around to both sides. Um, Sorrell or Burke, Finkley, then whatever else. Um, defensive tackle is Alfred Collins. Tia, Tio, Lee, Savea, or Jerry Bledsoe. Nose tackle is Aaron, no, Vernon Broughton, Aaron Bryant, Alex January, or Sidney Mitchell. Buckend, Ethan Burke, or Trey Moore. Justice Finkley on that side too, or you know Zena or you know Tap or whatever. So that's how that's how I see those. Oh, I'm and I'm I'm sorry. Colin Simmons goes after the or between um, Ethan Burke and Trey Moore, then Colin Simmons, and then all those awards between Zena and those guys. Okay, hold on. let me see if I could do this uh, real quick, quick, Alex. I think. Hold on one second. Just, just. Hold on one second. If I could do for the for the for the visual visualization of everybody, uh, Alex. This this was your depth chart. I think projected before uh, the season, uh, or at least before spring. It's not bad as far as that defensive line. That's good. Look at this. Yeah, oh my gosh, least. it's exactly right. Hold on, the, the, the linebackers are exactly right. The nickels is exactly right. The field corners are exactly right. Boundaries exactly right. Safety's not. There should have been war between Makuba and Taff. Um, and I should have had Jelani McDonald ahead of Phil Simi and um, Jordan Johnson. Jordan Johnson Rebel. It's actually about right. So I would say with this one with the SDE. Just take Ethan Burke over there and say Ethan Burke or Trey Moore, but leave Baron Sorrell or Ethan Burke over there at the Jack as, as well. I'd say Finkley's ahead of Vosick by now. Mm-hmm. I had I, I had things exactly right at defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, I I had things pretty much right at nose tackle. Or wait, no, no, no. I, I'm sorry. I should have sw- switched Collins and Broughton. So Collins at defensive tackle, Broughton at nose. So I, I got that wrong, but. The backups are pretty much right, except Aaron Bryant is ahead of Sadir Mitchell or Alex January. And then the Buck I had exactly right, it, except for the fact that Ethan Burke also works at Buck now. So, Alex, which he, which he did last year. So, right now, as we look at where your projected depth chart was, how, how accurate do you think? Let's just go through it all, by the way. How accurate is all of this right now, in your opinion? That's extremely accurate. It's a good job. I mean, it's a, it's it, it it it's almost perfect. Like I said, the only thing about it that's not perfect is that Burke should have been over there at both the SDE and the Edge. Alfred Collins and Vernon Broaden should be flipped. Oh, Leonga Lefau technically should be ahead of Ken, Kendrick Blackshire, but I do have an or between them, right? Darian Gallette should be the third linebacker behind Blackwell. So Gallette is over at the will and he's behind Blackwell. If we're getting super nitpicky, we could have Benda or Blackwell. 
since we're, we're, we're hearing more and more about how Blackwell is um, more of a 1B than a, than a 2 at that spot, right? The nickel is exactly right. The field corner is exactly right. The boundary corner is exactly right. Um, the safety is, should have had an oar between Makuba and Taff. And then Jelani McDonald should have been ahead of Xavier Filsamy. And Jordan Johnson Rebel should have been over here at the uh, boundary safety underneath the Makubas and the Tafts and stuff like that. Whereas Jelani McDonald should be over there at the field safety behind Derek Williams. But that's all. I mean, it's just nitpicky little stuff. This is, I mean, as usual, I said that this projection was going to be a lot tougher this year, and it was, but it's the same result. It's it's almost exactly right. right. Okay. I wanted to make sure we get the uh, the visualization up for the the people uh, out there. Uh, good job, Alex. By the way, good job, good. good job on that. Um, usually, usually after you get a good do a good job like that, Alex, I feel like you work up a healthy appetite, don't you? <laughs> I say, well, hey, I cert, hey, I, 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 I certainly do. And um, gosh, whenever whenever we talk about it, it's like I, my mind's just going ah, Texas beef traders. Of course, Texas beef traders. I went into Texas beef traders on Friday with my son Merritt. I met a dude. Um, man, I'm like I'm, it's 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 crazy how many people I meet uh, who watch the show and stuff like that. But a guy came in who would watched the show. He was getting a brisket to um, a brisket to smoke over Easter weekend. Uh, sat and talked to him for a long time with with my son Merritt. My son really enjoyed talking with him, talking about some hunting and uh, some fishing and some football and some stuff like that. His, his name's JL. So, so shout out JL, man. I look forward to catching you again soon, brother. Um, but dude, that's what you do at Texas beef traders. My son loves going up there because Darren gives him, they sell all kinds of stuff from around the community. They have a lady there who sells her cookies out of the place. My son loves these cookies. They're called Kelly's cakes. And so he goes in there and he gets Kelly's cakes and dude, it's, it, it really is this place where everybody knows your name. You go in there and there's a big table and Darren's like, Hey dude, here's a beer. Like, you know, like, let's sit down, let's talk. How's your week been? You want like a charcuterie plate? You want, you know, he's like pour, pour you a glass of wine, whatever. He just wants to show you that this place is welcoming and that the Texas beef traders, they just, they want you to be in there. They want you to come in and see the meats. Cause they know that once you try the meats, look, once you try them, you're, you're not going to anything else. Scan the QR code right there. Go to Texas beef traders.com, Texas beef traders, right in the heart of Lakeway. Delicious, delicious, delicious. Imported from Mason, Texas, Angus beef, no vaccinations, no inoculations, none of this cockamamie stuff, certainly none of the, M the new M mRNA stuff that they're starting to do with cattle. None of that stuff. All right. Go to TexasBeefTraders.com. And look, if, if you live in the Austin area, anywhere close to Austin, Shay delivered some to Temple the other day to, to an Orange Bloods member. Anywhere close to Austin, just call them. They'll just bring it to you. And, and you get 10% off. TexasBeefTraders.com. All right. After you buy, after you buy beef, go buy a house. <laughs> Eric sells homes. DFW is my main man for the master plan. If you're looking for a house in the DFW area, you have to look any further than Eric sells homes. DFW El Presidente himself has got you covered. Looking to buy, looking to sell. He's honest. He'll take care of you. He'll make sure that you get the best deal. And if you are not in the DFW area, but, but you know people in the area, then recommend them. Eric Sells Homes DFW, he has got you covered last time. Eric Sells Homes PFW, El Presidente himself. Here we go. And take him down. So we have a game. This is a game that I wanted to play Monday, but I got caught up with some stuff. I came up with the idea. Um, so if this goes completely wrong, Anwar, they can blame me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got it's got a chance to go even. It's it's only going to be two options. Yeah, yeah. Not right now, Alex, it's either going to be great or horrible. We'll see what happens. So I'm, I missed the show on on April first, April Fool's Day. Um, I, you said that whenever I pitched this idea to you, you said that you've already had your April Fool's rant, where you say that you're an idiot if you partake in it or if you get fooled by it. Um, is yeah. that the general take? Yeah, pretty yeah. pretty much. First of all, I didn't retweet anybody on April first because I didn't trust anybody. <laughs> Second of all, I think if you partake in it, uh, especially as a my kid being five years old trying to do an April Fool's joke, you're like Dad, I'm sleeping. Ha ha, April Fools. That's one thing. You as a grown ass person saying like I quit my job or I've signed with such and such or but that to me is kind of indication. what about a, what about an April Fool's joke on on your actual kids. Nah, I don't. I don't. Tour what, if, what, 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 what if they've been bragging all week about the big joke that they're going to play on dad? 
talking and talking and talking and just flaunting it over your head all week. So, oh, Dad, we're gonna we're gonna get you. We're gonna I get mean, you. I can't wait to like fools. But I want to do it. I don't want to do the joke on them. Oh, dude, I did. I did. Well, this was the thing last year. Let's just uh, look at the story. <laughs> don't get into it. Joke on your kid. A bad one. Yeah. So wow. because they said all week that they were trying to that they were going to get me right, and wow. um, they uh they so I went to the store and I bought um, do you know what a quiche is? Yeah. Okay. I bought I bought this quiche right, uh -huh. and I covered it. I bought it and then I bought a bunch of uh I bought the chocolate topping for um like cakes and pies oh and stuff. Lord. And I covered the I cut I, I cooked up that chocolate stuff and I drizzled it all on top of and I spread it all on top so it looked uh, like a chocolate uh, like like a chocolate pie. And then I took some of the drizzle, like the white drizzle, and put it on top so it looked and so I, I put it in the freezer or in the fridge, man, and it got it hardened. And so like you could cut it, it looked like a pie, right? And so the kids like saw the pie in there i I just left it in because i because i knew that they would see it right i and i knew if i offered it to him that it would be uh you know well, obvious. They, they, they they'd be suspicious so of course my son finds he's he's like where do we get the pie like look it's a chocolate pie it's a chocolate pie you know i'm like oh yeah yeah i totally, totally forgot about that like you know, the when um the neighbor came and gave us that or whatever you know? so they, they're like can oh, we have Lord. some i'm like yeah 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 i got a video of a man just, Eating it, thinking it's a chocolate pie, and getting a broccoli cheese quiche <laughs> <laughs> with chocolate on top. Oh, <laughs> well, you least, hey, Alex, at least you know if your kids have to go for counseling, you can trace it back to you yeah. know, well, dad did this to us, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but anyway, the, but anyway, the 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 game is, I'm gonna make a statement, or Omar's gonna make a statement, and you're gonna. And the other one has to just choose whether that statement is true or, or whether it's an April Fool's. Okay. So, yeah, and then, right. and then, so um, I guess we'll we we can start out with mine, if you want. Do you yes. want to start? Okay. Yes. All right, Alex is April Fools. Anthony Hill had twice as many quarterback hits as Ethan Burke in 2023. Anthony Hill, an off-ball linebacker. I'm Ethan gonna Burke. say that's true. I don't think that's an April Fool's. It is true. How you, you got you got the first? You know what, because I feel, cause I feel like you know why? Because I feel like I felt like here's why. I think six, that's how six, I six quarterback. I think it's six quarter. Yeah, six quarterback hits I have for Anthony Hill. Three quarterback hits in in the regular season for Ethan Burke. And and, and when I and when I talk about quarterback hits, mm -hmm. um. I think I do a little di differently in Texas because t t Texas does have a quarterback hits column for some reason, but even they have it. They have four quarterback hits for Hill, two for Burke. So however you grade it, generally I'm the one that's a little bit tougher about grading these things than the, than the Texas, um, the Texas uh, SID, you know, these, 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 these guys that are just bad stat takers, but um, even they have it as being double. So it's just it's just crazy, I man. It's just it's another one of these things. It's you were you remember last year that yeah you know Ethan I mean, having that Bama game by the way. Do you have that versus Bama? Yeah. How many hits? Yeah. Hold on. I'll have to go back to the second game of the season. Yes. Alabama just so in that game he had one sack, one quarterback hit, one one pressure, mm -hmm. and one half of a TFL. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Do you know pretty, what? Pretty that's, active off the edge in that game. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's what I go. That's why. I, that's that. Was, the Bama game is what made me think. Okay, that has to be correct because I remember his presence so much in that Bama game that I felt like I felt I felt all, all the time. I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't I haven't felt Ethan Burke like that at this moment. Not to say he won't, but I just haven't felt him and his presence like that. Fair enough. All right. All right. All right, I got all right, I got I got I got one for you. More of a philosophical one than anything else. I think Sukumel's Adidas hat is on too tight. <laughs> and Decorian Moore will eventually flip to Texas. Is it am, is this the am I just looking for the April Fools about um, I, I can't spot any lie about Sukumel's hat? <laughs> the hat oh. the hat is just the hat is just okay. uh a shot at a uh, Sukumel. It's more about the last part. I think, I think that you do think that Decorian Moore comes to Texas. That is absolutely true. It I, is. It okay. is true. It is true. Yes. Yes. 
I'm I'm just I'm suspect on. I, listen, I, I said this a little bit yesterday. I, I know you weren't here, but um, well, actually, you, you and of course, there was a debate on this one, right? I'm just suspect on a guy. I, I Alice for me is a kid who commits a year and a half in advance from his signing day. I'm sorry, I can't. I won't take that verbal commitment seriously. I, I just, I just won't. I, I can't. I'm not saying I don't. It's not disparaging. Do you take KJ Lacey's commitment seriously to Texas? Quarterbacks are a little bit different. Well, I mean, you know, because because quarterbacks they the quarterbacks traditionally um, commit early, so I'm not, I'm okay with the quarterback situation, right? But anybody else, any other position, I can't take it serious. I just I just don't. that's fair. The, the Charlie Strong because you're saying with the quarterbacks, it's like they they're kind of a part of the recruiting of the you know what I'm saying they're part of the yeah. recruiting arm like. I'm not saying Arch Manning's out there getting on, you know, Instagram and tagging another guy. That's not the way he does it. But I, you, you know, he was part of when they come to campus and stuff like that. You meet up with the quarterback. That's kind of like the lead dude of the recruiting class. You know, you yeah. kind of get the bell cow guy. It's not uncommon for quarterbacks to commit a year or two early, right? That's not. That's not. And, and most and because those spaces, those spaces are kind of premium spaces, right? You only get one, maybe two in a class at most. Those guys have to commit early, but the other positions, especially receiver, I mean, you can commit the day before and someone's going to take you, right? So I, I just, I, I, I'm always like, mm, I'm not going to take that serious. I feel like it you know, always felt like it was a soft commitment. And then when you, when the guys tell me they're committed, Alex, but I'm just still going to keep taking visits. I'm like, okay. And now we learn that not only is he, is he coming this up, upcoming week for a visit, then he's coming back for the spring game. For a visit, he's Colin Simmons is a, is a teammate of a former teammate of his. I, I feel like that at, at some point it's all just going to flip, and he's just going to. Bunch of former stop. teammates, dude. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I just damn, think, and damn, I think now Texas SEC, you can tell tell Texas in the SEC. I just feel like it's just a natural. I feel like it's inevitable. So yes, uh, you are actually correct. I think it's just inevitable that at some point he's going to be a you know be a Longhorn. That's just my thought. Do you think that there's any way that DeCorian Moore would come in and we'd even be having this Ryan Wingo, Jonte Cook to stuff about him, like not maybe not starting as a freshman? There's Do not a chance. There's not a chance. Like he comes in the first day, he gets here in spring, and he's and he's lining up as the starting whatever, right? I mean, DeCorian. Yes, DeCorian. I don't, you know what? The, my thing is with my thing is with Sark is if he feels like a freshman can ball, I think I feel like he puts him in. That there. guy can ball. Yeah. I mean, that guy. Can ball. <laughs> I just like. the thing is Sark Sark ain't a, a, ain't about this whole like. Well, you just got to wait your turn, dude. And we've seen his history. Like Kelvin Banks came in, and you know this, Alice. Kelvin Banks came in in the summer, and he was pretty much a starter from day one. So if if you can ball. Especially in the offensive line, you know how hard that is. If you can ball, I feel like he puts you in there. That's the same thing to have an Xavier Worthy. So, yeah. All right, here's my next one. I think Quinn Ewers will be picked ahead of Michael Penix Jr. in the draft if he had elected to go pro. I think that is true based off of Penix. Even though Penix actually ran a good time on his 40 at his pro day, but I think that the the injury history would be the thing that you uh, would nitpick a little bit about him, and I think you would look at the the game against Texas as the the anomaly to to the all of last season. Yeah, I mean, she got so this game is something. I guess we know each other too well, man. But yeah, you, you, you <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I look. I don't have a strong take on this, but if you put a gun in my head and you made me have to have to choose one, the the I, I think I would choose yours because here's what I think would have happened. I don't think yours would have participated. He, I, I don't think he would have participated in the Senior Bowl because it would have been too long before. You know, even though juniors can now, it would have been too long before he decided he wouldn't be able to get his stuff together in time. He said, no, maybe I'll throw the combine. And maybe he would have just held off to throw at his pro day. And it just feels like to me, this take like the JJ McCarthy stuff, right? With how now people are talking about JJ McCarthy. Could he be a top four pick? All this. People weren't talking about that before they realized through the senior bowl process that Bo Nix and that Michael Penix were 
they were disappointing there, right? Yeah. Um, and the, I sometimes think in the draft with the quarterbacks, especially, it's like once you get to a spot where certain guys disappoint you, other ones get artificially raised. And I just know how Quinn would have looked at the in Indy throwing the football. I know how he would have looked. He would have looked incredible. And he looked incredible at the pro day, you know, and that's just because that Quinn looks really good in those settings. You can get people falling in love. And the only thing that makes me a little bit um, hesitant is that if you go over to DraftKings right now, I looked at it yesterday and it might've changed, but we had the odds of the number of quarterbacks taken in the first round at 4.5. Now, and it was juiced to the over, to minus 200 was on the over, meaning they're telling you that, you know, they're not going to move it up to five and a half because they think it's going to be either four or five that go, that go in the first round. But if you want to take the five side of that and you and you want to make $100 on that bet, you have to put down $200 to make 100 back. They, they, they're they incentivizing you to take the under, right? Which tells me that Vegas thinks it's more likely that five quarterbacks go in the first round. So if that's the case, we're going to have – you know, Caleb Williams comes right, right off the board, right? Jane Daniels comes right off the board. Drake May probably comes right off the board. And J.J. McCarthy is going to come off the board probably somewhere in the top, I would say, top 10, given the landscape of the people picking. Um, that means that that means that Penix or Bo Nix or somebody that we're not thinking of might go first, might go first round. Yeah. And – that's the only – I'm not sure Quinn would have been a first-round pick in this draft. And so if Penix is the one who they think might go in the first round, then, you know, we'll see Penix go in the first round, and I think I will have been wrong about this about this thought that I've had, right? Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think Quinn would have gone first round after, after last year, but I think he would have been one of these high second-round picks where the second round starts like a Will Levis last year, and then, like, some team just gets him right off the bat in the second round. Yeah. So. Especially because you know, you know, round one, everyone goes and you know they go and say, okay, who's still on the board? And like, it's like, oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe this guy dropped. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you have yeah, have more of a time to evaluate. You know, more time to sleep on it. So well, it's it, it's like it's like Harbaugh's. It's like Harbaugh said at the owners' meetings. Um, you know, because Chargers pick five, five. Yeah, they pick five, mm-hmm. and he's like. We're like, dude, there's a there's a chance that we could have the first pick in the draft, like as far as we see it, because they, you know, they're not looking at quarterback. You know, they have mm-hmm. Justin Herbert. They're not looking at quarterback. So it's like they're gonna. They're, there's a chance of if, if 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 quarterbacks go one, two, three, four, it could be that they have their pick of everybody. That he's like, it's a it's a it's a great spot to be in. Also represents the chance that they could, you know, if there's anybody that really wanted to trade up to get a Marvin Harrison Jr. or a Joe Alt, who mm-hmm. I'm hearing more and more people say. Joe Alt, the left tackle, some teams have him graded as the best offensive player in the draft, even better than Caleb Williams, even better than Marvin Harrison and stuff. We Could we see, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Harbaugh tries to get a, 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 a little bit of draft capital if somebody wants to move up there for, for yeah, yeah. non-quarterback guys. All right. All right. All right. Are you ready, ready to um... – Ready to get some people in the building, mad Alex? Ready oh, to get no. some people stir it up, you know, because this this is the type of question that gets well, people. This, well, this is about what you uh, this, yeah, yeah. My, because, my, my, I, question, my, my question here, my question here. The line is at one point five. I Anwar will take the under on the Jeff Banks mistakes from last year. Under on the Jeff Banks mistakes last year. Oh, the, it's like the last yearish mistakes. Yeah, the, the mistakes that I think Jeff Banks made last year in the 2023 season. I I'll I'll take the under. I, I'll say hey, maybe just made like one mistake. On field, off field. Above all, yes. Good question. Cum- cumulative overall. Oh gosh, no. You'll take the over. <laughs> Right. Can, right. Can you can you guess which ones I'm going to say? Let's see. Let's see how you how, how well you know because it, it, it is correct. And I have two. From a, I have one on field, and kind of one on field slash uh, off field as well. What, I mean, was the monkey thing last? No, year? no, 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 no. What were his mistakes then? I'm just. I'm okay. Just, all right. Like there's always okay. a Jeff Banks thing. Like what? Okay, I got one. Keelan Robinson as a returner with a cash. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Just, uh, ah! 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely a big, that was definitely a big, big, big mistake. Yeah. With the I, cast. I've never seen somebody as a returner with a cast on his arm. Not just it, a cast. It was like, a, just like the size of a basketball at the end of his arm. It's just so stupid. And I'm yeah. just like, I don't know what, what's going on to anybody else on this team. If they can't, if they, if the two hands ain't better than one, like I, and he, so he drops he drops the ball two times, right? I think you know at least two, right? Well, no, he, he, there was the one. I think he dropped one, and there was one he just failed to pick up, right? It was like kind of dribbling around, and he just bends over to pick it up, and he can't even do it. But he can't pick it up. He's, he's got, got a cast on his hand. He's got to take his one right? good hand and like reach down and palm the thing. Like it's just a, incredible. So all right, wow. let me give, give me let me give my second one. That's gonna uh, someone's gonna catch uh, scuds or whatever. Can I, but can I say this? It's 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 literally a, a waste to have a scholarship kicker who only does kickoffs. I, I think that that's a mistake to me because your your guy who's kicking your field goals, that guy should be able to do kickoffs as well. Like I don't think you have to have like a Dunder Mifflin, you know, assistant to the regional manager, or whatever title, right? You got a kicker. You just and the, the, to have a kicker who their only responsibility is kickoffs. That's it. I think that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. When we start talking about scholarships being at a premium, Bert Auburn should have the ability to do both. Those are my those are my two things. Hey, but you gotta have will will do something. I mean, oh, do, 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 you, yes, or yeah. you just don't need a, a two kickers. Yeah, right. I don't think that they. I don't think at that point in time they knew though that Bert Auburn was going to be good enough. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. and here's the thing too. I'm biased about it. I, I really like Will Stone. He 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 lives out here. He goes to my he um uh, I think he was at my son's play football, his his after season party last year. He went to Regents and stuff. He kind of lives out here. So I I I like Will. I hope he keeps the scholarship. But yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't I, I don't know it. Um I don't know if um yeah. I gotta gotta kind of agree there. All right, how about this? <laughs> I get, you can be biased, but also yeah. say two things can be true. How about this? There has been a location in the Austin San Antonio coverage area of the National Weather Service that has already recorded a daytime high temperature of 105 degrees in 2024. That. That's an April Fool's joke. Ah, you got me. Okay, you got it's me. Too, it's been too cold. It's been yeah. in the morning. Well, do, do, do you know what the crazy thing was? I, I thought I thought I might be able to fool you on the other side of this because uh, um, they did they did what was it last week? When the day it got it actually got a little steamy outside. It got up to like eighty six around here or something like that. Mm -hmm, the day last mm -hmm. week, 86, 88 in some spots. There, there was a spot in the Austin San Antonio coverage area where they got a record high for this day of the year, and I, th I think it was in Car Car Carrizo Springs, and it was mm -hmm. 102 out there, 102. Wow. So it's already been 102 somewhere in the wow. Austin San Antonio coverage area of, of the National Weather Service. Now it's wow. it's far, it's far it's south and west of San Antonio, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of getting it's kind of, kind of starting to get deserty out there, yeah. but. Yeah, I thought I thought that saying what would would you have thought it was an April Fool if, if I said 102 like like the real yes. thing? I would have thought anything because I haven't felt anything past like 82 degrees or 84 since the beginning of this year. If you said 90, you would have gotten me because I would have been like, dude, it's it's bare. I barely have cracked a sweat in months. Dude, outside of working outside, you know, you could have gotten me with this. What Jason said in Slack or whatever cockamamie, horrible uh, Microsoft Slack. The the the, uh, the thing with um, <laughs> listen to this. The LS the Iowa LSU women's game out drew all, drew all but one of the five games in last year's NBA Finals, along with the clinching game of last year's World Series. Twelve point three million average viewers on ESPN. If you would have told me that, and I would not have read that this this morning mm -hmm. I, I i just said that is an april fool there's no way but i mean i i watched it you watched it everyone yeah. I know watched it. <laughs> so yeah. yeah i mean they had i think for the, the women's final four last year they were I, they were over 10 million i don't know if it was like 12 or 14 something like that so they had high numbers last year so um i only know that because i've only recently been 
following women's basketball for the last, you know, seven, eight days. So, but so now, you know, doing all my catch ups on that one. But yeah, man. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see about this one on, on here. All right. A Tesla driver wanted to fight me this morning with a woman in the passenger seat. Tesla driver wanted to fight me this morning with a woman in the passenger seat. Generally, a guy is not going to want a uh, dude driving a Tesla with having a female with him. You would think that with the female with him, he would just hold it. He'd hold his cool. Um, I'm going to say this is an April fool. It is not. Oh my gosh. What, what happened? <laughs> so check this out, Alex. I am sitting at a light taking my five-year-old to school, right? My five-year-old loves Teslas. Right. He just he just loves them. And every kid has their favorite cars. And I feel like today's generation is a different thing. He loves Teslas. Right. So we're at the stoplight and I'm pointing over. I was like, hey, look, Titan, look, there's a Tesla right there. He goes, where? I was like, I'm like pointing to the light, but like right over there. There's a guy looking at me. He's like. And I was like, and I'm not I'm kind of not paying attention. I was like, yeah, you see this? And he rolls down his window and his woman's in the passenger seat. And he goes, and I roll down my window, and he goes, You pointing at me? You got you got you you got something you want to say? And so what? I roll and I roll down my kid's back window and I go, Yeah, my kid, my five-year-old loves Teslas, and I was just pointing it out to him. And he looks and sees the kid, he goes, Oh, oh, okay. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, ah, ah. and then we, I just, I just look at him as I like my roll my window back up. So, yeah, that actually, surprisingly, Alex, a guy who I'm, I'm pointing him out to my five year old because he loves Teslas. You're a lot more charitable. I just smack about him. And wanted to fight at seven twenty in the morning. You're a lot more charitable with your fellow human than I am on war. I for, I, I would not have rolled down a for one. I I, I don't have a, a electric window, so it would it, it would have I, I couldn't have rolled down my son's backseat window. But um, I there's 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 no way that if somebody's some crazy idiot's talking to me and rolling down their window and trying to talk to me, I'm not rolling down my window. It's like you want to talk to me. It's like you can come here into my car. You come into my car, and you're gonna have a real, real big surprise, and you're gonna be on the wrong end of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I'll just I'll, 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 I'll stay <laughs> wanna... in my own, I'll stay in my own car, and I'm just I'm not gonna talk to other. <laughs> I'm not I'm talking to the guy that weirdo that rolls down his window because I'm trying to like try. Gosh, yeah, I just wanted man. him to feel stupid. I just wanted him to feel stupid. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, I got that thing in the car if I need it, but I just wanted him. <laughs> That thing's that will be at all times, but I wanted him to feel stupid yeah. in that moment with his girl in the in the car. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. the only main reason I did that. Yeah. Yes, it was a Tesla. I, drive. I personally think he's. I, I personally think he's going to have ten other times during the day where he's going to feel stupid. So, well, so yeah, I mean, well, it's it, the kind it, of guy that. If you're road raging in a Tesla, first and foremost, but if you're road raging, if you're angry at seven o'clock in the morning. You're just inevitably going to mess with the wrong person, and and probably end up with a couple of hot ones in you. I'm gonna do th I'm I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna do one that's non-football, and then quickly okay. do another football one since we're kind of running a little bit low on time here. Um, I was I'm I'm I'm, I'm very interested to hear. About oh, jeez, <laughs> oh, okay. Lord. A, a white-tailed deer only eats on average one quarter of the grass in a day that a mature milking cow eats. <laughs> No, this is a this is such a total guess. I need there's a mature milking cow. Are there immature milking cows? Like what? What's up? But that 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 just means fully grown, right? Yeah, just a one that one that you can milk. A white-tailed de deer eats on average one quarter of the grass. Well, I feel like. I feel like that's an April Fool's. I feel like I feel like cows eat all the time. When I see deer, they're eating a little bit, but they're just kind of wandering around. So. That's an April Fool's. April Fool's. <laughs> okay, you got it. <laughs> no, the the uh, deer, I thought I could get you. I thought maybe I should have said one one eighth. Deer deer don't really eat grass. Yeah, Can, I don't ever like, see. I don't see they, deer eat that much. They they eat forbs. They eat like acorns and. Um, 
you know, prickly pears. They 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 eat weeds. They eat mm-hmm. weeds, but mm-hmm. like acorns, man. That's the that's the whole for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They they don't eat um they don't really eat much grass. They eat grass if it's that if if, if it's that newly grown little 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 tiny kinds of grass, right? That like winter rye and stuff like that. But yeah, they don't they don't even really eat eat grass. That's what makes access deer a lot different. The a- access deer not just they they're they're bigger, they taste better, um, more kind of fat on them and stuff. One of the reasons why, and one of the reasons why they outcompete whitetail and why they're considered an uh, um, an exotic is not only because they're bigger or considered an, an invasive exotic is not just because they're bigger and they can, you know, fight with them and stuff like that, but also they have this extra little part in their stomach like cows have to mm-hmm. where they can, they, they can process eating a lot of grass, right? Yeah. So whenever there's not acorns or there's not prickly pears or there's not forbs and stuff like that for them to eat on leaves and stuff, um, mm-hmm. the, they can eat grass, which just gives them a huge advantage over, over whitetail. They just can't eat that much of it. Um, all right. Here's a real one, though. Speaking of Jeff Banks, okay. I think that Jeff Banks is the coach that would be the biggest loss to Texas if he were to go elsewhere. April Fools. You don't believe that at all. <laughs> you, believe, you, believe, you, be, you believe Kyle Flood would be the biggest loss. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you don't need to even talk about it. What, yeah. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Kyle Flood's that, you know, the dude. All right. How about this? How about this? I am buying that these defensive tackles are plug and play replacements. Oh no, this is an April Fool's. Dude, that's a that's like an April Fool's you play on your kid. That's so obvious. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no way. No way. Like I I was okay with Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy put, replacing Keandre and Morrow. I was like, ah, okay. I I can buy on that one. But this one. And by the way. What have, what have you heard, by the way, as relates to these defensive tackles in the spring so far, Alex? I've just heard. I mean, not. I mean, gosh, it feels like there's only been one dude I talked to that even brought him up. You know, and, and what they say, and what they and granted, yesterday's getting people on yesterday's practice was hard, right? And yesterday was a tough physical practice. We had a tough one on Saturday and the one on the Saturday before. But that's where you get – whenever they go do a bunch of team and they do the inside run and they do all that stuff like that, right, that's when you get to really see these guys and you can get an evaluative look at them. If you go to a practice where it's not – like how I anticipate Thursday's practice is going to be, but even even less – even the first couple, couple practices – that we were allowed in for. And then the third practice where they're just, how much can you really take away from the defensive tackle drills that, 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 that you see in those kinds of practices? You, 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 you really can't, you need to have one where there's, it's heavy team focus like Tuesday was. And like the two Saturday ones have been like this next Saturday one is going to be, but I do know that one of the Saturday practices, one of the guys who I'd spoken with said that, you know, Alfred Collins, Vernon they said they, they they had the same observations that we have after getting to see them live in these team drills. And there's like, well, those two guys are obviously the best, mm-hmm. you know what that means as far as, yeah, I don't, th- I, dude, I don't think anybody thinks that that I don't think anybody is buying this April fools. Like I don't think that anybody thinks that they're going to be plug and play. I think people are just saying, man, they look good. Right. Alfred mm-hmm. Collins, AC always looks like a million bucks. He just always yes. does. Yes. Vernon Broaden looks fine to me. Does he need to play better this year? Yes. But they both look really good, you know. Mm-hmm. And they're both mm-hmm. obviously they're both obviously the two best. And so we're just gonna we're gonna have to see. But it's been a real. You asked me what I've heard about them. Like I've only heard them mentioned once, and there was just somebody telling me the same thing that I already know. That man, they look like a million bucks. Yeah. Are they, are they gonna play like it? I don't, I don't know. Um, all right, let me do, yeah, let me do uh, one more. Okay. And then if you got one more, you can do it or we can. All right. Yeah. I think, I, I think I may, I may be able to squeeze out one more. Okay. Which one is it here? Okay. Pretty easy. I think Jordan Winnington gets drafted. 
I think you like Jay Witt. I do. So I, I think you like Jay Witt. And I think that part of you that likes Jay Witt is, is going to ignore reality. And so I think you're going to say <laughs> that's true. I, I believe you believe that that's, <laughs> that's going exactly to right. You got it exactly right. Oh, it's just so true. It's like you're gonna ignore reality. You're gonna ignore all the facts that say that this is why this guy shouldn't be drafted. I I think I think that you know here's and here's why very very specifically two two reasons why three one he's he's here's the here's the easy one he's a good he's a good all around player it was he it was like he's a really good blocker right he is two he is just all you can dream of as far as a teammate and a locker room guy and a glue guy and somebody that you would just love to have on your team and in your organization as you're like fifth or sixth wide receiver right special teams dude great situational guy blocker maybe can come in and make a clutch catch for you at some point like he did versus washington right and then the most important reason, as we look at the fifth, sixth, and seventh round now in the world of NIL, talk to any of these NFL scouts, in, in any of them. They say that these picks are, aren't, aren't, worth a, aren't worth a darn anymore, right? When it used to be you, you could get a – like when, whenever Justin Fields, whenever that trade went down for like a conditional fifth or something like that from Pittsburgh, it was a, it was a huge laughing stock among NFL circles because they're like, dude, a fifth isn't even a fifth anymore. Because if anybody gets one of those fifth round day three valuations, if they're worth their salt at a major university, they're going to get an NIL deal to come back. That's going to make it worth it to them to, to um, not necessarily make as much as they're going to make through their whole NFL contract, but to say, dude, okay, I'm taking a risk here coming back, but I'm not really leaving that much on the table here as far as what my opportunity cost is on the NFL side. So I can go back and I can help my draft stock. They've said that that's what I should do. And oh, by the way, I have 750K waiting for me. It makes it a whole lot easier for these guys to come back. Fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks right now are not at a, are not at a premium. They're not very good players. And all it's going to take is one area scout to stand up and say, dude, Jay, you know, I mean, somebody's going to have to stand up for him and say that they want him, but I think somebody will. So I'm, 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 I'm going to say that, that, he gets, that he gets drafted fifth through seventh round. The thing that I, the only reason I would say it's it could be possible, I think I think there's a I, NFL guys respect Sark, and I think if if Sark kind of puts his 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 stamp of approval on a guy and says, hey, you know, I think you know he he he'd be worth it for you, and explains all those things. I believe there's a lot of respect for Sark in the NFL circles that they do believe him, they trust in him. He's he's I, I've never I've never heard anybody say a bad thing about the guy. Just haven't. So I, I do. That's the the thing that I think if there people are talking in a room and it's day three and they're just like, all right, who who's out here? Maybe this Jordan Winnington guy or some kid from McNeese State who has 1,200 yeah. yards receiving. Mm -hmm. you know, and they may say, like, hey, listen, you know, this guy may be the number one at McNeese, but the, here's Jordan Whittington. Uh, let, let's go ahead and take a, you know, a chance on him and see what happens. And, I, and, and so that that is possible. Now, I don't necessarily think he's going to get drafted, but it'll be interesting to see. And, of course, I want him to get drafted. All right, yeah. here's my last one for you. This is not – this might be the tougher one, okay, but maybe not. Walk on running back Kai Woods would start at another program. Another <laughs> we, we talking about Mary Harden Baylor? Or are we talking about like we're talking about Louisville? Or it's like, I did not specify where. I'm just talking about another program, clearly not SEC or anything like that. But let's let's say Houston Baptist, or let's say something to that effect. Do you have a roster on you? What is what is Kai Woods? What, what is Kai Woods? What, what's what's Kai Woods' height weight? I think he's five foot nine, one hundred and eighty seven. Five foot nine, one hundred and eighty seven pounds. Let's look, let's let me look up his high school stats. Let me see. Yeah, so we're talking about like Texas A and M Grand Prairie, this kind of thing, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Let's see. Uh, let's like uh, in district. You know, his district, he's carried, had 132 carries, 877 yards, six touchdowns, 34 receptions for I 413 mean, and five touchdowns. Second team All-State as a senior. And what, day. 
Six A, second team All State. Yeah, second team All State. It's better than I ever was. <laughs> um, uh, played in three games last year on special teams, Rice, and had a tackle against Texas Tech. I wonder what his major is. What's his major? He's undeclared. What Kai Woods declared major? <laughs> I it's, I don't I to be honest I haven't seen him <laughs> I don't know I, I I think I mean I've seen him at pre- is he number twenty nine uh yeah that means uh yes yes twenty nine okay. twenty nine I mean twenty nine is not bad uh yeah so you you've noticed him yeah you've he's not bad I, yeah I think he could start at like Prairie View A and M or something like that I yeah yeah I think he could I'm not sure he started like Rice uh huh you know or um. Maybe like Sam Houston State or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that 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 kind of spot. So yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like Kai Woods. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, I've, I've noticed him. And, and, and again, smaller program. You know, this is that. I get it. Right, right. It's either smaller program and all of those amenities, or being a walk on at UT and having all of those amenities because they actually treat their walk ons pretty good pretty good like they yeah. they don't they don't like just you know treat, treat them like trash they get a lot of the things so i i think he would i think he would but well, I to- oh yeah it's uh so i guess my answer to that was because this isn't buy or sell this is Correct. april fools so my answer to that is i think that you would and and i'm and i'm and i'm right you're, only, you're right so i only the only thing i the only thing that got tripped up was the tesla one that's the only one you got wrong and I feel like I got just about everything right as it relates to you. Well, it's fine. And now we can still do buy or sell again this this week when, whenever we come back. Uh, we're, we're, we're up against it, brother. So what do you got for the people? And I'll get us out of here. Hey, uh, make sure if you have if you missed the podcast yesterday, make sure you check it out. A lot of good stuff, a lot of good conversation from there. Make sure you check out House Divided at noon uh, with Catch and Chad uh, today. We'll be back tomorrow morning. So remember, I always say, live day like it was your last because one day it will be, which means don't try to fight anyone today. Just enjoy your life. <laughs> or just or just keep the window rolled down. Regardless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, gosh, man, uh, I, I, I will say to Text94, I believe that Sandman in, in the chat of the barbecue places he's listed, uh, every single one of them that he's listed is actually uh, very, very good. So I would definitely listen to him for the – the uh, barbecue arguments for sure. We would tell uh, everybody out there, man, thank you guys so much for listening today, for watching today. We have um, we have a goal of getting – are we at 18,000 subs? Have, have we, we got – We're at 18,500. Okay, so we're, 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 we're trying to get up to 19K, 20K. Man, if you could please subscribe to the channel, like the show. We certainly appreciate it, man, but it's been great having like, like over 400 of you guys here today in the Specs chat line. Thanks to Eric Sells Homes, DFW. Thanks to Texas Beef Traders. Go out today. Go do something big. We will see.